Welcome back, Akron fans, to the Christmas Tournament Casts. This is the second game of day two, and we are seeing, we're going to be seeing Rock Munch vs. JRC. Just going to go over what's happened so far. So the last game, we saw Electro beat Sakhanov basically with a, well, an all-in rush to his main base, while Sakhanov tried to go off with a hidden expansion, which did not pay off. Not really a surprise. So now we're going to see JRC vs. Rock Mox, which is... Winner's bracket, the third round of the winner's bracket, will be deciding who is in the winner's bracket, or the semifinals, basically. That is Group J and T, I believe, are the semifinals. So Group H right now, Jersey versus Rock Mox, and let's go to it. So Rock Mox, starting out in the top right corner of the map, Jersey, Jericho, I should say, is top, starting in the bottom left corner of the map. And Rock Mox, we saw, was CISO. Jericho will probably be Grekum, but he's... He actually has been playing CISO a fair bit recently, so I wouldn't be surprised if he decided to play CISO this game. However, this we do not have a tournament race pick. You don't have to choose your race before the tournament starts and stick to it. Nothing like that's the case, since Akron being Akron, you can change your race within the game. But Jericho in fact going Vec Gear, so I assume he went random originally. And has decided to go random in this tournament. It's a rather interesting choice. It's a very difficult choice to make. If you do go random, it's very difficult to pull it off, but he's probably going to go for an economic start from here. On a map like Hills, I'd... Actually, no. If, he's... if he knows Hills well enough, he'll go for an all-in with Zion Pulsers. And Rockmox is going for a very quick importer with three, three RPs, probably get a factory soon, and get ATHCs from there. That's a very typical CISO start in 1.3. Jay Raccoon has not actually started building up yet. He's still paused, still preparing everything. So wait until he gets... Oh, there he is. So he is... In fact, he's going for the all-in. Very good. So he's going for two RPs. From there, he'll build a foundation. He needs to build one right now, though. As soon as possible. I don't know why he isn't, but... He needs to build a foundation right here. Get a depot immediately as well. The whole idea of having the RPs early on is that he gets the resources. But... Interesting scouting pattern. Moving all of his virions out to scout. I'm not sure why he's doing that. He really only needs two. And here's Rockmox's factory. So HSCs will be coming out of that as soon as it comes up. And it's, well, here goes the Rockmox scouting forces. So both players' scouting forces are coming into each other's bases pretty pretty much the three minute mark. And Rockmox's forces aren't really seeing anything useful. Jericoon hasn't actually done anything. The time wave hasn't come along with anything Jericoon has been doing. Jericoon back at the 42 second mark I'm very surprised he hasn't built a depot yet. I don't know what he's doing. Because he's supposed to build a depot basically in this first opening. He's built the RPs, builds foundation, and then builds the depot from there. So I don't know what he's waiting for. This is rather bizarre, honestly. But Rockmox... Well, Rockmox is a bit further in the future. He's not focusing on where the factory is. So not really going to care about that. And now it looks like Jericoon has everything he needs for... Well, everything he needs. I... And he teleporting back this RP, I'm very confused as to what he's up to. Unless this replay got messed up, I don't know what's going on. I I don't think he's in the chat at the moment to actually confirm what went on in the original game. Rockmox, however, is, so if Rockmox is watching, that would be very helpful. Okay, so Rockmox is telling me the replay is, in fact, fine. So there's nothing to worry about. Jericoon just simply didn't build a depot early enough. Like, really, the build order is RP on LC, RP on QP, Foundation, like, in the first few seconds. And then once the Foundation is done, Depot. And then convert one of the Zion Pulsers, sorry, Zion Viewers into Zion Pulsers, or just build a Zion Pulser straight up. The building of Zion Pulsers is a bit, a bit later, but you also have the Zion Veer still in your base for building RPs if you have a good position, if you can defend it. It's a bit riskier to pull that off, but it also gives you a nice bit of, a nice bit of protection from ATHCs, and he still lets you build up your economy. Though still somewhat risky, but it looks like Jericho's still, with his inventory, actually dealing a lot of damage. Rockmox... Not sure what is happening here, because Rockmox needs to have his factory up. He... I thought he had his factory up quite a bit earlier than this. See, 34 LC... No, he can't have his factory up quite yet, so... No, his factory must be building here, because that... That's probably just a synchronization issue. He's got... He's gonna have a factory up here... No, that's a Marine. He's not actually building a factory anymore. I don't know what he is thinking, because the... We, we can clearly see the infantry is dealing a lot of damage, even with his additional infantry. The, the Vector infantry, that is. But it looks like 
J Raccoon his his infantry are not coming in at the same time enough, so it will not work. J Raccoon will lose his infantry very quickly. Teth Beers are anti-air units; they are not anti-ground units. They cannot do anything against this. And like I said, what is Jericho not doing in his main base? Looks like he's trying to build a foundation right at the edge of the unplayable past. No, not even then. He's simply ordering his units around. Oh, I see. Building a proxy foundation. Why didn't he do that earlier? No, seriously. Why did he not? Why is he waiting till the edge of the unplayable past? At this point, he has hardly any chrono energy left. I mean, it's replenishing quickly, I guess, but he's got hardly any left. It's going to be very difficult for him to do anything with these units. I mean, I see what he's doing, but he could have done this quite a few minutes in real time ago. It's just a bizarre setup, trying to wait this long. I mean, maybe he expects, you know, avoiding the scouting from Rock Mox, but honestly, this position, or actually slightly below it, here, exactly here, Rock Mox would not see it with infantry. Or maybe here-ish. Unless Rockmox specifically scouted it out, he would not see with infantry. Ironically enough, it looks like Rockmox's infantry are going to be able to follow... Yeah, he's going to follow Jericho's infantry right into the depot, so he's going to see that depot before it builds up. Rockmox is going to know exactly what's going on. And there he goes, his infantry are seeing it, he is focused on this point in time, so he does see this depot being built. So ironically enough, Jericho's apparent attempt to avoid being scouted out led to him being scouted out. He might still be able to pull this off though, he does have the resources to get his Iron Pulsar. Only one, though, and Rockmox is building quite a few infantry, and if he gets another three or four marines or special ops, he's going to be able to fend off that Zion Pulsar without much issue. So J Raccoon going for a very risky strategy, and I don't think he's executing as well as he could be. I mean, he might have practiced this before, but as far as I can tell from my own experience with Vekir, this is not going to work. I mean, okay, it might work, but it's really risky, and it's mostly working because Rockmox has not built a factory and not built Lancers. If Rockmox had a factory with Lancers building up, he'd be fine. He'd, he'd win from here. Like, Jericho has basically set himself up so he could build some foundations in his main base and build more RPs if he wanted to, but his all of his units are so out of position it would take him a while to get that built up, and the Lancers just go back there and take out all of his RPs. So, I'm a little bit surprised at the way this is playing out. And it looks like Rockmox does not have enough infantry to actually fend off the Zion Pulsar. Special Ops completely losing morale, deciding to attack its own armory. Oh, never mind. Okay. No longer insubordinating. But still, if Rockmox's forces have completely lost faith, this is looking bad. But really, like I said, a factory and lancers would be enough. And a foundation coming in here to heal up that Zion Pulsar, I don't I think Rockmox has lost this. I think Jericho has got he's managed to make this work. But I think it's more that Rockmox did not build up because look at him, he's got 300 LC in the bank. And that's where he is now. He has 300 LC and five orders worth of he has five orders worth of chrono energy. He could build a factory. He could have built a factory before. Now it's too late. But he could have before. He is trying one now, but it's too late. It's going to go down. This Zion Pulsar has. This Zion Pulsar rush has pretty much won. This factory will do its best, but Jericho all he needs to do is throw another RP onto, onto QP, get the QP he needs, get a bit more LC, and then he'll just win. And also getting rid of that importer. Very nice choice to target. So this importer goes down, and Rockmox will have nothing to build with. He ha is, however, using the reserve on infantry, but no importers for the factory. That factory is completely useless. J Raccoon, slightly ahead of Rockmox, is building up more infantry, actually. Building up another Zion Veer, going to the depot. And I expect he'll be switching over the RPs to QP, or one of the RPs to QP. And then just convert the Zion Veer into a Zion Pulsar. But this Zion Pulsar alone is winning the game. So J Raccoon winning the game with a Zion Pulsar. Rockmox, actually more Rockmox losing the game with not having built the factory in time and having all this money in the bank. I don't know what Ro what was Rockmox doing, I wonder. Oh, I see. He was playing on his laptop and he smacked into that's why the special ops decided to attack the armory. I like my explanation better. But anyway, Zion Pulsar is just ripping this to shreds. Rockmox trying to do what he can with special ops and these foundations healing the Zion Pulsar way too quickly for it to be of any use. So that Zion Pulsar has the Zion Pulsar has won the game, it just so happens to be controlled by J Raccoon. And mechs. Well, that is the one defense he does have. Using that to try to build up another importer, good idea. Rockmox is definitely trying to do what he can to recover from this. I do appreciate seeing that. It's going to be difficult, but these mechs, as we see, he is building an importer with a mechs. Building it out of the way of the Zion Pulsar as well. So if he can get that up, he should be able to get actually a Lancer. If he does, yeah, he actually, if he gets the importer, it'll take him about a minute. So he has to hold off losing his entire base for a minute. 
which isn't a short period of time. Like that's this is gonna be very difficult for him to pull off. Yeah, his importer's gonna or his army's gonna be going down very soon. And the importer's up. It's so that's 45 to seven seconds. Once we see this go up about 740 or 740 or so, then that's gonna be the game. And two Zion pulses coming in now. Like I said, the Zion Vera I mentioned before. That is that is done. My right, Rock Mox, very valiant effort. If he, I don't know, if he gets lucky, he manages to last long enough. He has the resources for a Lancer. He will be able to get that out, and he will be able to build an armory and use that to build up. I'm just going right behind Jerrycoon's base too, but he will be able to build up an armory and use that to get up infantry if he needs to. And it looks like Jerrycoon shifting his focus too much. He really should be attacking this factory. That's his biggest threat. That's the only thing that can beat him right now is if this factory builds up a Lancer, but he's not going for it. He's going instead for resources. However, Rockmox has enough for two Lancers, I believe, now. Yeah, no. Yes, he does. It's... No, sorry. One more one more pull of QP and he does. But once this, once this RP, just one more cycle and he has enough. That'll be exactly enough for two Lancers, but he'll only be able to build one and it looks like Another 30 seconds, this factory will be going down in time. Jay Raccoon has just barely avoided losing this one. He managed to get out of that factory in time, and... Rockmox trying with a macro fab. So, he is definitely staying in this game. Trying with a macro fab. Probably trying to get Martanks from here. That's the only thing you can really afford. Get a Martank, take out the Annex. It'd be yet another base trade. Hills? I mean, every Hills game we've seen thus far, I'm pretty sure, has been a base trade. Oh, and never mind. Jay Raccoon actually found... Found the importer, finished off the importer. This one mech might be able to rebuild an importer in time, but losing that importer is going to be huge. Because it means this macrofab will not be useful. He is building another importer, so that will help. But it still delays him by a good 30 seconds or so. Well, by 30 seconds fewer than it would have been for rebuilding after this importer died. It's still quite a lot of a delay. So no Martanks coming in for that. And his RPs, that's really all he has right now. Jerrycoon, let's see, he's trying to figure out where that mech has gone. Not finding it, but if he finds this macrofab and this importer, Rockmox has pretty much lost it. He has, once one reserve comes in, he'll probably build a Martank. And then from there, there we go, there's the Martank. And then from there, he'll try to use that for pushing through, either getting rid of the Zion Pulse or getting rid of the Annex. But really, Jerrycoon is, Jerrycoon's calling the shots in all this. Rockmox is just trying to do what he can to stay alive and not get detected. If Jerrycoon detects him, He's gonna win. It's Jerrycoon's game to lose at this point. Oh. Sorry, if it pauses during the stream, that's probably just because the stream occasionally... Get, it, my upload rate isn't great, so the stream might occasionally reflect that. I try to do what I can, however, to make sure it doesn't get too choppy. But I digress. One of the... the RPs are gone, however. Rockmox has lost both of them. So, Rockmox really only has the resources he had built up and two Martanks. He has enough resources for one more Martank, though not enough reserves. That's going to take a little while to build up. Once that's done, he... Well, that's his only chance, really. Take out these Zion Pulsers and hope for the best that Jerrycoon does not get air units. Because Jerrycoon has not been building up anything. He hasn't had any more RP since these first two. And he's focusing evenly on QP and LC when he really should be focusing a bit more on LC. And now the Zion Pulser has found it. Trying to take out that Martank. Now the Martank will be able to beat the Zion Pulsar one on one, so both Zion Pulsars will have to come over here, and it looks like only one of them has skipped teleport. So this Martank will be able to hold off, and that still signals to Jerrycoon where the base is, but Jerrycoon does not have enough time on the timeline to act to effectively attack it. So he's gonna need to build up a bit more and work from there. So right now both players I ah, here we go, Zion Vera for a second Zion Pulsar coming in. So both players are in very tight spots, which like I said, happens a lot on hills. This is a base trade, although Jerrycoon has managed to keep his base, but he's not really using it much. He should be jumping this over to LC, like he is doing now, but should have been doing that a while, a couple minutes ago, and then build more RPs from there. Just build himself up, because he has the advantage. Rockmox has to build back up to where he is. So if he builds up... Oh, Zion Turgeon, that's not a bad idea. I was thinking if he builds up Arian, he's going to be in a great position, because Martanks can't hit air. But Zion Turgeon would also work, because there are no detectors around here. So, really, the Zion Churcher will be able to just go through, it's cloaked right now, be able to go through and just deal all the damage it wants to. And another Zion Veer sounded like it was coming up. No, I must have misheard that. Oh, we see an Annex. So, Jerrycoon is definitely building inside Rockmox's old base. And here comes 
Zion Turchers trying to take out this Martank attack. Martank Assault going towards Jerrykun's main base, as I mentioned would happen before. So, Rock Mox Jerrykun at the 1139 mark near the edge of the Impelable Pass, and Zion Turcher will be coming in, bypassing everything. And Bitsprice is not going for the attack right now and taking out this weak Martank right away. Because Jerrykun now not seeing... I'm, why is he not attacking? Why is he only moving? Maybe he wants to see the whole base or take out the importer, but it's a little late for that now. Right now he wants to take care of this force coming through. So Jerrykun, I don't know what he's planning on doing, but he does have a spare annex, at the very least. The RPs, however, are the really worrying part. Getting rid of this one importer, so Rockmox will be losing that importer soon. That will mean he won't be able to build up. Well, he has one reserve now, he can, but he can't use it to build. He doesn't have the resources to do so. And getting an armory up, so that is kind of handy. Really, Rockmox has been dying very hard this game. In fact, if Rockmox pulls off this assault, he might actually not end up being dying. I mean, he's definitely in a—he's definitely on the back foot. But oh yeah, he's—he's he's really on the back foot. He has no hard piece anymore. Never mind. He's—it's really just a matter of these Martanks doing everything they can, dealing all the damage they can, trying to take out this annex, doing a pretty good job of it too. So this annex is going down, unless Jerrykun decides to attack them with the Zion Turcher, but. I think Jericho is more concerned about taking care of the production buildings rather than the army, which is a mistake at this point. He has, he could get rid of all these Martanks with that one Zion Turcher, and there's nothing that Rockmox can do about it. Oh, never mind. Rockmox does have one RP left, barely surviving, but it is doing what it can. So he will be able to actually build up more RPs slowly but surely. However, at this point, Jericho can easily still win with the Zion Turcher. My point still stands: the Zion Turcher going over the Martanks will kill them. A like Jericho has, for all intents and purposes, destroyed Rockmox. Rockmox still just happens to have a small enough army, or a large enough army, but still a small army that he can... Well, a small enough army to slip through, but a large enough army to deal meaningful damage to Jericho. And really, once the Zion Turcher cloaking runs out, that's going to be problematic. And it's only got another 12 seconds, too. So, at this point, the Zion Turcher has lost the advantage it had. There is still a Zion Veer coming in here, another couple Zion Pulsers, so that will help. Probably won't win, but that will still help. The Zion Turcher still has not taken advantage of its cloaking. There are no detectors right now for Rockmox, and there really couldn't be. The only detectors... The only detectors come out of the factory, or the special ops from the armory, and for a while, Rockmox had neither, and Jericho had destroyed both of them. And there was no way that Rockmox had the money to build either up. So, once again, this is kind of a question of... How the metagame is not the most solid, so it's a bit hard for players to necessarily guess what their opponents are doing. Given that, however, Rockmox has lost his Macrofab. He does have an armory. It will be probably building a marine pretty soon. And then from there, build RPs. He has the resources for an RP now. So he could start rebuilding RPs. It's going to be tough, but Jericoon has no RPs right now. So both players have no economy. Sorry, Jericoon has just one RP that's not doing anything. So both players have no real active economy. Rockmox has one LC RP. Jericoon has one RP that's trying to teleport to somewhere safe. But both players are pretty much on the on the ropes simultaneously. Really, it's just a matter of who who lives and dies from a Martank Zion Pulse Zion Turcher fight. That's going to be the deciding factor. They are, however, trying to provoke this attack in the armory, getting rid of what's there, and another Zion Veer here for Jerrykun, which won't be able to build up into a Zion Pulser unless he converts. Does one conversion on? If he converted, he'd be fine. But he's not doing that right now. And the Zion Pulsar in a terrible position. Zion Turcher trying to get rid of the armory. Jericoon really focusing way too much on the armory. Just to note, unlike a lot of RTS games, Akron requires that you both destroy military units and... Or not just production structures, but also the military units. Non-production structures don't count, but production structures do. If the military units are alive, however, that will not work. And there goes that Zion Turcher. So really, he needs to kill these Martanks before he kills the production structures, because otherwise he's not going to win. And it looks like right now he's really in a bad spot. If he jumps back a bit, converts converts the QP to LC, and builds a Zion Pulsar, he will be able to hold off this Martank. But that's the only chance he has. He doesn't have the time to go back and fix up this attack. But at this point, that was terrible positioning. That Zion Pulsar was in a terrible spot, and Jericoon did not move it into a good position to deal with what was going on. Those Martanks... Now coming in, trying to get rid of what's over here with the depot, and doing a good job getting rid of that one Zion Veer. I really don't know why he's not converting. I don't know if he's aware that you can convert. You can convert with closed RPs. You haven't always been able to, but you can definitely now. And I'm not sure why he isn't doing so. 
Ah, there we go. That's because he had done so and I just hadn't seen it yet. There we go. So he does have his Iron Pulsar. This still going to be a bit risky. It's really a question of positioning. And his Iron Pulsar, unfortunately, distracted by that mech. However, fortunately, very near to the depot, so it can repair, no problem. As long as it keeps doing that, Rockmox just needs to avoid... Well, if Rockmox can kill it off somehow, it's... Still Jerrycoon's game, but very close. And that mech, once again, distracting the Zion Pulsar. Barely surviving, however, the Zion Pulsar gets out of there. We'll be able to take care of the Martank. As long as Jerrycoon remembers to micromanage that thing, pop it back into the depot when it needs to. And Rockmox is actually not focusing on it. Rockmox losing this Martank. Right at the implode past edge. Rockmox trying to attack the Zion Pulsar. And it looks like the Rockmox will be able to take care of that Zion Pulsar. Well, down to needing to heal up. But not enough to get, be able to get rid of the depot in time. That Zion Pulsar will take out the Martank. And with that, will defeat Rockmox. As long as Rockmox does lose this eventually. He does need to get this. Once he gets well, he's reserved, he needs to build a Marine. If he can build up RPs from there, he might... Still have a small chance. Retreating to the Martank, definitely a good idea, but still going to be very hard for him to rebuild. He has a small chance, mostly because Jerrycoon doesn't appear to be... F no, he is following him. Definitely following him to the Armory. That Armory has not built any Marines, surprisingly enough. Though Rockmox doesn't have any Chrono Energy, which is probably why. No, here we go. There is a Marine. No RPs, though. Once again, probably because of Chrono Energy. This is a very, very tight game. And... Actually, one of the more interesting games on hills. I have gotta be honest, I I'm not sad this game's on hills. It's actually worked out pretty well. And Martank will be able to defend. No, Mar with Marines will be able to defend against the Zion Pulsar. All that support together, especially the Zion Pulsar moving in, not attacking in. Jerakun. I don't know if he's paying attention to that. Definitely going to the top left. So he knows about the Marine. The Marine. He knows where the Marine is planning on building. Oh, there was actually a second marine. So he is. Rockmox definitely doing his rebuild plans. And that. Jerrycoon now running away. What? No, Jerrycoon could. If he attacked the Martank. Like. If he attacked the Martank, he might have a small chance. If he does it, times it right. It just auto attack might not work, but if he attacks right, hits the Martank first, and then the Marines, and the Marines are close enough, he might have a chance. But right now, Rockmox is rebuilding. Again. And Jerrycoon has no RPs really doing much, except for this one over here doing the LC. But that's about it. So, right now, Rockmox pushing back once again. Uh, and Jerrycoon has to retreat once again. Okay, so Jerrycoon has an advantage. Has a massive advantage next to this depot, however. So he can basically take care of anything that comes along here. Rockmox's only hope would be to try to maneuver around the depot. Actually. And Jerrycoon trying to get skip teleport, so that will help out once... Well, where Rockmox is going probably is going to be two more RPs or so, and then from there build a factory and try to build up from there, get himself a proper base. And yes, I should note, the full base trade has occurred. Occurred a while ago, actually. Jerrycoon's only real hope is healing up, using this foundation, or using this depot for defense, and then using that to heal up, while Rockmox just builds a massive amount of, well, relatively massive amount of Marines. And here comes that big battle! Two of the Marines going down in a hurry... But Zion Pulsar getting killed! So Jericho's gonna be very careful with this. He won't be able to kill both of those Marines before he has to jump that Zion Pulsar back into the base. And there we go. So that Zion Pulsar will be able to take care of two of the Marines, but really that Martank is the big concern. Rockmox is gonna likely go back here, re micro it to get rid of that Zion Pulsar, uses Martank as best as he can. So the battle we're seeing now is likely not the final one. Rockmox is gonna be going back to help heal up, but this depot is almost dead. And J Raccoon has enough resources to build a foundation next to it. But he's going to want to use that to build another Zion Pulsar. And here we go. Rockmox jumping back to remicro it. Definitely targeting, targeting the Zion Pulsar. Probably going to retarget it once again. J Raccoon needs to come back here. Definitely needs to come back here now and heal up the Zion Pulsar. The Zion Pulsar has been lost, and it doesn't look like J Raccoon is jumping back to try to help it out. No, he is. There we go. So J Raccoon, he is going to be able to save it. But he has to play very close attention to this battle. Until this battle falls into the Unplayable Past, until the Martank's death falls into the Unplayable Past, he needs to be paying very close attention to this battle. So for the next 30 seconds or so, paying very close attention to what Rockmox does. However, it looks like he might be able to hold it off so that it doesn't matter what Rockmox does, he still won. And now going to get rid of this resource processor, which should finish off Rockmox. But Rockmox jumping to the end of the Unplayable Past, trying to just finish off what's here, and it looks like... He actually managed to! Jericoon needs to go- Jericoon doesn't even have a chance to go back here. This is off the unplayable pass. Jericoon not paying attention to this. 
this really important battle is going in Jericho's favor. Sorry, Jer going against Jericho's favor. Jericho not even aware this is happening, and he has lost his Iron Pulsar in the playable past. This has got to be extremely painful. We cannot do anything about this. I think Rockmox is going to just barely pull out a win. And that's really kind of sad, given that the Zion Turcher up here from about 10 minutes ago could have won the game for Jay Raccoon. And even then, before here, with the attack that came in, if the Zion Pulsar and Zion Turcher were next to each other and just tearing apart the Martanks, once again, that would have won the game. So this has got to be extremely painful for Jay Raccoon. Building up a Zion Veer, doing what he can, but that's not going to be enough, and he can't build a depot in time. And another Zion Veer coming from the north, but that won't be enough. This Martank will destroy both of them way too quickly. The only possible advantage would be superior positioning, but even that's not going to be much. Rockmox has taken this. It's a very tight match, but Rockmox managed to take this and make it work. So Jericoon's... I mean, Jericoon's rush sort of worked, mostly because Rockmox kind of let it work, but... Really, this worked out because the Zion Turcher did not attack J or did not attack Rockmox's armies when it had the chance while it was cloaked, and ended up getting killed while decloaked. That's just painful. That really is painful. I mean, just think about that's Jericho had at least two chances to win this game, and did not use either. I'm not sure what he was thinking, but that this is kind of sad. So Jericho can try to do what he can, position the Zion Veer as best as possible to get it out of the way. But Rockmox now has a resource advantage. He doesn't have any RPs in this area here, but he still has a couple RPs around the map. He is probably going to be building more. He could, he's building a factory. He could easily build more RPs and develop from there. But yeah, Rockmox has actually successfully rebuilt. And there's very little that Jericho can do about it. Martank just taking care of that, and Jericho surrenders! So Rockmox has won. This... Wow, that was a bizarre game with a bizarre comeback. But that's... that's what it was. That's extremely surprising. So, now we have Rockmox in the semifinals. J Raccoon in the loser's bracket. But he will be fighting the winner of Shalka versus Electro, which is in fact the next match we'll be playing. So, just hold on tight. We'll be back in a couple minutes. And... See you all then.